This is a geek leader. Hey guys, John Rowda back again with episode 41 of Geek Leader. Today we're talking about assets. This is part of our uh, Blitz Week that I'm putting on. We're talking about our fate, our focus, assets, time, and energy. These are four finite resources that we have at our disposable that a lot of people might not think about when they think about finite resources. So yesterday we talked about focus and how focus can be exhausted and used up. And today I want to talk about assets. So primarily when we think about assets, a lot of times we think about money, we think about finances and that kind of stuff. And I'm going to hit a little bit about that, but I'm also going to talk about some other assets that you have that you may not think about on a regular basis that do get consumed and they're finite. We can't always replenish these. Now, some people are saying, well, money, you can always make more money. Right, but as leaders and managers, we have budgets that we have to operate within, and sometimes we can't go outside of that that uh, budgetary realm. And I want to talk about how we can manage our budgets a little bit better and uh, and think of a little bit about personal finance. One of the things that I noticed at, my, uh, at one of my previous jobs when I was managing people, um, I, I talked a little bit about personal finance, and It's one thing I I didn't realize at the time, but I've started to notice it, that a lot of people don't pay attention enough to their own personal finances. They're not necessarily planning for retirement the way they should. And I have a good feeling that, you know, a large portion of the audience listening to this probably don't have the correct amount of of money being put away to their 401k. They're not planning properly for their future. So I want to hit that a little bit, but then I want to get into more things that you do for your work. Right now, you should be putting away for your 401k. I don't care how old you are. I don't care if you're you're 19 years old or if you're, you know, 69 years old. You should be putting away for your retirement. Um, for for me personally, I started out as soon as I got my first job. Whatever the company matched for 401k, I put that maximum amount that they would match away. And I consider that to be the minimum that you would put away for your retirement. As you get older in your career and as you get more uh, settled, you should be putting away more and more. So for me, every time for the first several years, every time I got that uh, cost of living increase, usually it was about 3%, I would put 1% of that 3% into retirement. So um, when I first started out, my company matched 4% of my income dollar for dollar into a 401k. So I would put an additional 1% when I got the 3% raise. So that way I still felt like I got a little bit of a raise, but I didn't miss that 1% because I never had it before. So it wasn't like I was giving up part of my income. It was just something that I, I didn't even notice it coming out. Um, and I did that for the first several years to increase how much I'm putting away for retirement. And uh, when I would get big, big raises, like big promotions, I would also put that in there. So <clears throat> maybe you had a 3% raise every year, but then you got promoted um, and that was an additional you know, 6 or 7% raise, then go ahead and put another percent in and continue that habit until you get to a, a substantial percentage of your income that's being put away. And you don't even realize that you're getting, getting that away, but it builds up pretty quickly over time and it will help you be prepared for retirement whenever you get to that stage. So that's a little bit about personal finance. Another thing you can do, I, I talk a lot about this in my talks at conferences, is, is to start a side hustle. I think side hustles are great. They keep your mind fresh, uh, especially if you're doing something that's slightly different than your, your work. So maybe you're a database administrator. Um, get into a side hustle teaching databases. That's one thing you could do. You can get into a side hustle uh, building websites or something that's slightly outside of your realm, but it keeps you current, keeps you relevant. Uh, one of my favorite side hustles that I do is I teach part-time at the uh, local universities. Um, you do have to have some educational requirements for that, but but um, if you don't, you know, have a master's degree or a, uh, a, a doctorate degree, you could still teach at, at technical colleges. And uh, that's where I cut my te- teaching. That's where I started out. And I still teach part time at our local technical college. And I really enjoy that as well. Um, and that also keeps your mind fresh. And if you're hiring people, man, you have a crop of students right there that are graduating that you can hire and bring in as interns or whatever. And, and you can you can actually teach them the things that, that they need to know. Um, so that's, that's my stint on um, personal finance when it comes to assets. But now I want to get into some other things that are assets at your job and in your, your work that you may not think about. Um, your, your tech skills, your ability to, to learn the things that you know, in your knowledge, in your brain, your experiences that you've had, all those are your assets. And uh, sometimes when you're managing your assets, you want to think about how can I keep my tech skills current? How can I keep these assets you know, growing because we all know that if you stop doing something, you stop uh, developing in a certain language, you start to lose that skill. And think about that as as a as a balance sheet. Think about that as a, a bank account. 
a bank account of assets, that bank account is your tech skills. And as you stop using it, that bank account is going to slowly depreciate because you have fees and you have penalties and you have, have expenses that come out of that bank account of tech skills. Now, what you need to do is on a regular basis, replenish that, that bank account. So what I like to do is I like to go to, to, to tech conferences and learn there to help build up that skills. Um, another thing that I do, um, I talked about side hustles earlier. That's another way to build up those tech skills is to get a side hustle. Teaching, for, for example, I have to stay current in certain technologies that I'm teaching. Otherwise, I'll fall behind and, and maybe it's not something I use as an IT director today, but that tech skill that I'll be learning well, you know, while I'm teaching students and staying current on that will benefit me in the long run. And that will keep my tech skills bank account you know, built up. Another thing that we can think about is your network. And people don't really think about their network as an asset, but it, it absolutely is. And just like your tech skill bank account, your network is a bank account as well. And if you don't reach out to people and you don't communicate with people, you don't go to lunch with people that you that are in your area that you've, you've, you've kept in contact with, the value of that network, the value of that relationship, of that connection drops and de- decreases. I mean, LinkedIn is a good start, but that's definitely not enough to keep your network assets in check. It's definitely not enough to keep it built up. It, it is a good start to communicate with people, to to recognize people, to congratulate people on new positions. Um, but whenever you do that, send them a message outside of just, hey, congratulations on your new job. Send them a message and ask them how, how they're doing. Uh, what led to this change? Um, is it something that they're excited about? Is there any way that you can help them in that new role? So I have a friend that was recently promoted to a management. It's their first management position. I uh, Obviously, I sent them a link to our podcast because I think it's important for them to, to get these skills, but also ask them, is there anything that they're struggling with that I can help them um, with? And it's just a simple message that goes through. Now, a lot of times people will say, you know, I appreciate the offer. I'm still trying to figure things out. I'll let you know. And nothing may come of that but something may come up that they may ask you for your help. And at that point you can step in and offer that, that information and that help. Um, uh, another thing that you can do whenever you're, you're building up your network is to, is to communicate with people outside of that online messaging format, you know, meet with people at meetups, meet with people at conferences and talk to those people and, and remember those people. Um, I just recently uh, was at a conference and I met with, with a guy and he started talking about some things with his uh, family that were going on. So I sent him a message to follow up with that, you know, cause it's important, you know, from his perspective to understand that, um, th- that I am paying attention to the things that he's talking about that aren't necessarily work related and that I care about those things. And I, I want to follow up to let him know that, yeah, I really do. I really am interested in those things about you that aren't necessarily work related that I'm not going to get any benefit from financially or in a career mode, but that it's important because I value him as a person and as a human being. And I want him to understand that, that, that he means more to me than just his job title, right? <clears throat> and I think that's important when it comes to building up your network. And in doing so, that network bank account kind of adds a couple dollars to it, adds, adds a couple of notches as it builds up that, that network. So we talked about tech skills, network. Let's get into actual budgeting when it comes to work. Um, one thing that I realized when I first became a manager, I knew nothing about corporate budgets. I knew nothing about how expensive software maintenance contracts were. I knew nothing about... Um, how to handle a budget. So I kind of had to learn a lot of that on my own. And I want to get into more about budgeting in the future. And we'll have some guests on to talk about that. But one thing I didn't know anything about was negotiation skills. I, I, I've given a podcast about negotiation skills. And um, you can check that out on episode 11, uh, The Art of Negotiation. But one cool thing that I realized is that sometimes you just have to ask. And yes, yeah, uncomfortable to ask. You're afraid to ask. But if you just ask for a discount, a lot of times you'll get that discount. So <clears throat> one, one thing I did is I went through my list of contract renewals for software maintenance. And I just sent a simple email and just said, hey, um, I've been a customer for X number of years. We really enjoy your product. We're not looking to move anywhere. But I was wondering if you can give me a discount on this annual recurring maintenance um, to help me convince our bosses and leaders that this is a good product and a good value and we should stay with you guys for the future. Very simple email, just one message sent right across. And a lot of people said, no, this is our rate. We can't change it. But some people just said, yeah, absolutely. Here's a 10% discount of what you're currently paying. And um, one of those emails actually came back and reduced our software expense for $10,000 per year going forward just from an email. Just a simple email can save a company $10,000. 
Um, another thing you can do whenever you're talking to vendors is to be open and honest and upfront with them. And I gave a podcast episode about vendors as well. It's episode 33. Definitely check that out. Um, being open and upfront will help you get the best price to begin with. And whenever you accumulate all these things, it'll help you keep track of your budget. One thing that I recommend that I do is I actually have a budget notebook, physical hard copy notebook sitting on my desk that I refer to on a regular basis. And I think it's important to check that out at least monthly to see where you're standing um, on your budget as you go through. Because there's a lot of times that you'll just, you know, add things to it or buy things here and there and not realize that, that it's building up. Now, everything that I do uh, talk about with budgeting on a business standpoint, you can take that into your personal life and do the same thing. I recommend the Mint, uh, Mint.com, to help me manage my funds, and it's just a, uh, you know, something I throw out there. But definitely check it out um, and uh, use that for your personal budget and finance as well. Um, one more asset that I want to hit on is your team, the team that you work with, your peers. Um, that you manage, those that, that, that report to you, the ones beside you, above you, all those things are important. And think about your team as, as an asset and how do you grow that asset? Now, you can grow it by adding people to your team, obviously, but a lot of times we don't have that luxury of adding people to it. So how can we grow that asset and manage that asset of a team? Well, I think that's building relationships. One-on-ones is probably the best way to stay in the loop of your team, to manage the individual relationships that you have on your team. So I recommend one-on-ones you know, as, as often as you can. Um, I try to do them every two weeks, monthly, as, uh, as we have a guest that's going to be on soon. We'll talk about that monthly is the minimum for that kind of thing. But I, I do them, uh, you try to, try to do them every two weeks. Every now and then I skip out and because um, we'll have things going on. People be on vacation, especially now that it's summer. But every two weeks or every week would, would be ideal for those one-on-one conversations. Um, team building is also important. Regular lunch and learns. Um, one of the things that I do is I'll have um, uh, staff advances with my team. Um, some people call them staff retreats. I like to call them advances because I like to be going forward where we'll talk about things and I'll reiterate our team code and the values that that I want to instill in our team culture. Um, but lunch and learns are great because people get together, they, they eat, uh, <laughs> they communicate, they talk about things. Um, and, and that's a good way to help build that asset, that value of your team and the worth of your team um, is to have those regular events to help build that team. So the four assets that I talked about were your network, your tech skills, your financial budgets, and uh, team today. And I hope that's helps you manage the assets uh, that you have, the finite resource of assets. If you have any more that you want to talk about, hit me up on Twitter, uh, at John Rauta. Send me messages. I'd love to know some more tips that you guys have of managing your assets. And if you've enjoyed this podcast, Blitz, and the other podcasts that I'm doing, please go to iTunes and subscribe. Leave me a review and rating. That would be awesome. And uh, I appreciate any kind of comments and, and, and feedback that I get back from you guys. I really enjoy doing this, and I love to, uh, to get that, that feedback. So send me some. Send me some emails. Send me some uh, tweets. Leave me a review on iTunes. That would be awesome. I uh, appreciate you guys staying with me and checking out the podcast.